Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. And if you're new here, I'd like to say welcome. For this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I made this stenciled geometric cake that I did in one step. The stenciling and the coloring of it was done in one step. So if this sounds interesting, please stick around. So what we need to do first is get our cake ready to be decorated. And what that means is I'm starting with some already leveled cakes and I'm using a piping bag to fill them with my American buttercream, which I will try to remember to put a link on here for you. So if you wanna do that recipe, it's a bubble free uh, recipe and it's awesome. So <laughs> I'm using my offset spatula to level it out. Make sure that your um, layers of cake are as lined up as you possibly can, especially since this is a taller cake. Now you could go ahead and put a board in between uh, in the middle of all these layers of cake if you would like to, uh, since it's a double, basically a double barrel cake, but it's not necessary if your cake is a lighter density cake. And I'm using this dark chocolate ganache to crumb coat it so that helps to hold it together and it doesn't bulge like it may otherwise. And in between the um, filling of the cakes, I put it in the freezer for 10 minutes, and then after I do this crumb coat of the ganache, I put it in the freezer again to get it to firm up so that it's a little easier to work with. So 10 minutes in the freezer or 20 minutes in your refrigerator. And then just make sure you get that top lip pulled in. I like to make, I like to get even my crumb coats as smooth as I can. I know it's not necessary, but I'm kind of a picky pants and <laughs> I have a hard time stopping myself. So you know you're gonna go back in and do this extra layer of buttercream on the outside if you do exactly what I'm doing here. So you don't have to worry about getting it perfect. I just like to get it as good as I can. And then once I put it in the freezer again after the crumb coat, like I said, and then bring it up and do the final coat of the American buttercream. I had colored this a very pale pink, which I use a soft pink color gels with a little tiny touch of ivory to get it more of the, um, the blush pink. Now definitely set it in your freezer again before you do your stenciling here. And I would do it for a good half hour. Now let's say 20 minutes because you don't want it to have some condensation because that can help, that can make it hard to get your, your stencil off. It might stick a little bit. So you need to move a little quicker with this, but make sure that your buttercream that you are stenciling with is a little thin down so that it um, is a little easier to spread. Mine could have been a little bit thinner I did wrestle with it a little bit. You'll see uh, in a little bit here what happened, but I will also show you how to fix it if this does happen to you. Since your cake is frozen, well, the outside of it is frozen, it can kind of stick. Or I'm sorry, the buttercream can firm up a little too fast for you. And what that does, it makes it hard to scrape off the excess. And then it kind of pulls off of the cake sometimes too when you remove the stencil. But I used some pins to hold the stencil in place which kind of helps a little bit. And then I'm using my offset spatula again to spread the buttercream. Now, what I did here, I made a couple mistakes on this cake, but if you guys have watched my videos in the past, you know that I kind of want to show you by example, if you make a mistake, what to do. My original plan on this cake was not to do the stencil all the way around. I think I was thinking of the cake I'm doing tomorrow, where I am planning on doing a stencil all the way around. <laughs> So I went to all this work and then realized, ah, shoot, I need to remove some of this. And I will show you how I did that. So fear not, there are ways to fix boo-boos. We all do them. So anyway, uh, and this is how I did the gold. There are different ways to do it and I've shown you different ways, but if you want to not have to paint all of your stenciled lines on your pattern, just go ahead and use some gold luster dust mixed with some Everclear or vodka or rejuvenating spirits and get it to a painting consistency and just paint over the entire surface of your stencil before you remove it. And fingers crossed what happens is that it you're doing both of your stenciling and your coloring of the stenciling, the gold, all in one step. And I'm all about saving time and I could have saved a lot more time if I hadn't stenciled the whole dang thing. <laughs> But well, I gotta keep talking about that. I will show you how to fix it. Now, once you get this painted, don't let it set. Go ahead and remove your stencil right away. There's no reason 
to let it set. That's just going to even make things even harder. And just remove your stencil very carefully here. And what you will see is there are patches that are missing. But I went in and painted them and I will show you how I paint it after I show you how I removed my mistake. Now I had put it back in the freezer for another about 10 minutes just to make sure that it was firm enough that I could go back in with this offset spatula. Um, you're gonna, I find it easier to use one that has a tapered point to it to go back in and remove those pieces. Now all you have to do is once you just kind of scrape the surface, it comes off easier than you think it's going to. Then I went back in and I just filled those spots where I had um, gouged the surface with a little bit more buttercream. No big deal, easy peasy. I know I say easy peasy, and I've been doing this for a while, but it really is not that difficult. Just make sure that your buttercream is thinned down enough that you can kind of go over the surface with your spatula and it's not thick, it's not leaving too thick of, um, of a layer of buttercream because that just makes it easier to remove it. And then I went in with a fine tipped brush and I just kind of touched up those pieces that I had accidentally removed when I was removing the extra bases. So that's how I fixed it. Not too bad. Now I'm doing a white chocolate drip and what I'm doing there is I'm just checking the consistency of the drip. I find if you put it on a plate or something that um, like something plastic and watch how it drips down before you do it on the cake, then you know when you're in the safe zone of your drip dripping where you want it to. You want it to drip, but you don't want it to drip fast and you don't want it to keep moving. You want it to stop at a certain point. And since my cake is cold, it's going to stop at a little, a little faster rate than if it weren't. So you, these are all things to keep in mind when you're doing your drip. Now I'm gonna slow down the decorating. I always go so fast through this, but you know what? Sometimes people wanna see the whole process. So what I'm using is some silk flowers that I had purchased at the local craft store. I believe it was Michael's. And I put a big old dollop of buttercream on top where I wanna put these flowers. And that's what I stuck my flowers into. Now, if you want to be double sure, just go ahead and wrap your stems in some floral tape just in case it actually pierces the surface of your frosting. It's fine. I find if you are washing your floral before you use it, and since this is artificial, it will get rid of any debris. But you can wrap the, the stems or you can actually use a straw to put your stems in before you put them into the, the um, cake as well. There are a few ways to handle this. Since these cakes are not meant for purchase, I am only doing these for decoration purposes. Sometimes I kind of skip a few of those steps just because it's not necessary, but I want you to be aware of what you can do. Now with these roses, I wanted them to be a little bit more splayed out. So I just went in and I just kind of bent those petals back just a little bit. You can do that. You can do that with um, fresh floral too. You can kind of coax those petals open just a little bit. And then I added some at the bottom so that it kind of um, balances the entire design. Again, attaching with some buttercream. And just to play with them until you get them where you want them. Sometimes there's a lot of um, adding a flower, eh, it didn't work, take it out, add something else, rearranging, and that's fine too. A lot of the time we don't know what we're doing until we start, <laughs> correct? Am I the only one? <laughs> I have a base plan, but then things things change. Probably nine out of 10 cakes that, I, that you guys see don't end up with what, being what I had in my mind. Some elements, yes, and some things, no. So I guess my designs or my sketches are just a rough idea. <laughs> so there you go, go guys. My geometric stenciled cake with some floral and a white chocolate drip. I hope you decide to go ahead and give this a go and it made my life a little easier and we'll see you on the next one. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to Check out my other social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.